I said like and subscribe or someone might get tea bagged. Come on, do it now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Young, thank you for coming here today and for all the work from you and your staff into delivering this budget. The president often says it, the chairman said it a minute ago, a budget is a statement of your values. And this budget shows that President Biden's values are with the working people in this country, putting forth a budget that will build a safer, stronger country and ensure America stays competitive for decades to come, even lowering the deficit, all by simply asking billionaires and giant corporations to pay their fair share. There is a lot to like in here. The President's budget understands that tackling the child care crisis, as you just mentioned, is an investment in our workforce and in our economy, and includes a lot of other important investments, everything from boosting the supply of affordable housing to strengthening Medicare and Social Security for the next generation. And those are the exact kinds of investments that House Republicans are attempting to hold hostage now or cut entirely as Congress looks to address the debt ceiling. The full faith and credit of the United States to pay our bills on time, like every family is expected to, should never be held hostage to score cheap political points. So let me be clear, for the sake of the House Republican colleagues, threatening economic catastrophe to cut Pell Grants is not the political winner you think it is. The President is absolutely right. We need to drop the politics, address the debt ceiling without any strings attached, and soon, just like we have done under administrations of both parties. Director Young, my question for you. Can you talk to us about the importance of the level of non-defense discretionary spending proposed in the, this budget and how a strong non-defense discretionary top line that does invest in our families and our infrastructure and our workforce directly strengthens our country's ability to compete with China and others on the world stage? Yeah, I'll, I'll add one thing to that uh, as well, Senator, our national security. Um, and uh, what still baffles me is we keep defense on one side uh, and State Department, USAID, uh, FBI, Department of Homeland Security, all on what we call non-defense. Uh, so if we have to uh, take drastic cuts to non-defense discretionary, some plans would actually wipe out non-defense discretionary, uh, we would see... Uh, drastic cuts to the only child care program we really have at the federal level, the child care block grants, would be obliterated. So families who use that for child care assistance uh, would be left out in the cold. Uh, Low-income heating assistance, which I know uh, many of your communities uh, rely on, uh, also helps with cooling. Uh, that would be uh, let go. State Department would be harmed. Um, our border operations would be harmed. Uh, so the, the list goes on uh, and on. It would be detrimental uh, to see those cuts. Sequestration, for example, we talked a lot about what happened uh, in 2011 and 2012. Uh, that was a 5% cut, small in comparison to what some are talking about now. Uh, and some agencies, some programs that re working families rely on are still trying to uh, build back from, from those harmful sequester cuts. Well, thank you for that. And I'm, I'm just going to say that now we do have the President's budget. Uh, as chair of the Appropriations Committee, we are going to be pressing forward with the work of writing our nation's spending bills as quickly as possible in a bipartisan way. And I'm working very closely with Vice Chair Collins on this. Uh, I believe we have a real opportunity and a responsibility to work together to make our country more safe, more competitive, and do some good for the people we represent. And at the risk of sounding like a broken record, while it's good to see many rep Republicans acknowledge the need to build on these key defense investments, I have to say it again, as you just did, investments in non-defense spending are just as critical as investments in defense spending. We have to invest in our workforce um, to build those semiconductors here in America, just as we invest in military readiness. It's not a question of either or, we need both. So I do hope that my colleagues on both sides of the aisle take this into consideration as we do move forward on our appropriations bills through regular order. Rest assured, we are going to be very busy in our committee with hearings and markups to get these bills to the floor as soon as possible.